Mr. Wilson, can you hear me and see me? I can hear you. I can see you, yeah. Very good. Also, I have the breathalyzer. Even in Mexico, uh, I located the breathalyzer, and uh, it's my gimmick now to do it at the start of every show, but uh, since we had a dispute, you know, I, I, <laughs> I figured I would do a special one for you again uh, here at the start. Uh, they're tough to find down in Mexico. They get misplaced sometimes. I don't know uh, why that happens, but... Click, click. Now let's see if I can get it to focus here. Uh, that's sometimes difficult. Uh, Not zero. I saw it. Yeah, you saw. It. Okay. <laughs> How you doing, Ethan? I'm doing good. I just wanted to. There it goes. All zeros on the score. There. I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? Good, good. I'm uh, unnaturally busy right now. Um, we just um, we just keep moving ahead, man. Yeah, you've been killing it, uh, in all honesty. Uh, and I've been seeing you everywhere, uh, and you've been blowing up. What do you attribute that to? Um, well, I mean, I, as you know, I spent a couple of years really refining my debate skills. And I had a couple of really big opportunities which came up. One was the Matt Dillahunty debate, and that one ended in eight minutes. And that, uh, I think, really put me on the map more than anything else, kind of in the more mainstream um, and then from there, there was a bunch of big shows that had me on for various debates. And, um, and then of course people were attracted to the channel because they didn't even realize I did other content. And I think from there, it just kind of started to blow up. Now, um, that's true. You did. You've been coming on this show for a long time. Uh, and, uh, like about said, three years almost. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you've been one of the, uh, long time guests here, uh, on the show. Um, what happened with the guy and we're going to go through a bunch of stuff, but, uh, what, what was the guy's name? Wes, Wes Watson? Is that Wes his name? Watson. Roy's, Roy's Wes Watson. Yeah. So what happened there? And you basically threatened to shoot him on stage, which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as you might know, there are people who are not fond of me. And uh, I do tend, when I travel, to uh, stay armed. And um, I've been using guns my whole life. I'm, I'm very skilled, especially with handguns. Florida is an especially good place to travel if you're a person who likes to carry because there is no uh, restrictions on a carry permit. You can just be anybody and carry, um, you know, carry concealed. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, so of course, you know, we we were we were both packing me and Jim Bob both. Um, I don't really think too much of it because usually nothing's going to happen. But a gun is like a condom, right? If you or <laughs> maybe maybe like a parachute. If you need it, you don't have it, you're never going to need it again. It's, it's that type of thing. So, Anyway, we didn't really know what the format of the feature was going to be. We didn't know for sure uh, what they were going to do. So they were like, um, you know, maybe it could be like a debate or it could be kind of like a fresh and fit show just done live or they weren't really sure. So then what ended up happening is we got put on this panel with these millionaires, like kind of these success guru millionaires. You, you know the type. You know what I'm yes. talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, for sure. And in some ways, I was way out of place there, right? Because I'm, I'm hardly some big fucking, you know, millionaire. I'm, I'm uh, just kind of a Midwest, lower middle class guy. <laughs> some more you know working I mean? class type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so when we got pulled up on the stage, they did want to have like a contrasting view to these guys, like um, a different version of success than just Bugattis and whores, right? So uh, when, when Wes Watson came out and was giving his speech, um, he was talking about, you know, you need to be rich, ripped, and rare. You need to be on steroids. You need to be <laughs> making $93,000 a month. You know, he makes $55,000 a day, all the shit, all the stuff I didn't give a fuck about, you know what I mean? But when it got to me, uh, and I gave kind of what my version of success was, it was an anti-materialism message. And so what ended up happening, I think that West thought that I was counter-signaling him. I think he thought that I was, you know, purposely exactly. counter-signaling his message. And I, 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 I guess I kind of was, but that wasn't the intention. It wasn't overtly to try to say, hey, having money is bad, being rich is bad, because I don't believe any of that. It was just to say that that shouldn't be the ultimate goal. There's more in life than just that. And, uh, and it just set him off, and he went fucking berserk. He just went berserk. He roid raged out. His fucking bald head, the veins started popping out. Uh, so then we got into it live at this event. And it made for great TV, ultimately, sure. I guess. But, um, but yeah, I was not, uh, was not ready for it. So well, at one point he said, and I, so I wanted to get him on record saying it, because I was like, man, I might have to fucking waste this guy. <laughs> He's like losing his mind. 
And he was like, I'll go over there and smack you. So I gave him the warning because it's a stand your ground state. I was like, listen, don't threaten armed men in Florida. It's a really bad idea. Don't do it. Right. Because he was saying he was going to come over and like smack me or yeah, something. He, he said that, yeah. And I'm like, dude, if you come over here and I wouldn't have waited until he, he even smacked like that wouldn't. I, it's a stand your ground state. Once you make the threat and you move over to if approach the person. Like that, yeah, that's it, dude. That's it. And the one thing about a stand your ground state, you don't pull your gun to defuse the situation or else you get in trouble for that. You pull your gun in the situation. That's what you don't get in trouble for. So if you pull I the gun, just, you pull the trigger, uh, you pull the trigger. That's right. Yep. Yes. That's exactly yeah. right. So anyway, so we got into it there. He kind of calmed down after that. You know yeah, what I mean? Kind of calmed down after that. So, yeah, yeah. And then I was just like, okay, <laughs> we're, we're good. But I mean, there's no possible way that that would not have been justified. If a guy threatens you, and then attacks you, and he's a multiple felon, and he's clearly, uh, you know, the size of a grizzly bear. I don't think anybody would even have blamed me. Um, but I obviously, I'm glad that 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 it didn't go down that way. We just kind of ended yeah, up in a shit talking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just ended up in a shit talking match, and then you know everything was pretty much okay. You know. Now, how do you contrast your? You know, you talked about, and I know, I know the types you're talking about, and I'm not downing those types, but uh, you know the millionaires and you need all these cars and all these women and have few, a few on the side and uh you know it's all about bugattis like you said and ferraris and uh, making as much money as possible not that there's anything wrong with being rich obviously there's I nothing mean, wrong with that no right uh but how would you contrast uh your worldview uh with theirs so i think that wealth is uh that's part of your means but it's not an end in and of itself that just the pursuance of wealth for the sake of being wealthy usually doesn't end up very well for people. You know what I mean? Um, if you are to become wealthy and you're using it to a good end, support your family, maybe take care of your church, take care of the people around you. I think that that's a good thing. That's, that's fantastic. But I see the people who've chased money their whole life and it just runs away from them. You know what I mean? And kind of this pursuit, um, these, these end up being pyramid schemes by these guys. You know what I mean? Yes. Where they're like, uh, follow my program, and then what you're doing is selling my program to other people, and then set there, those people are selling the program to other people, and it, to me, it's all scam artistry, you know what I mean? Uh, I do make money, but I do it legitimately through entertainment, you know what I mean? And basically, that's it, and um, if you don't want to pay for entertainment, you don't have to send in any cash, it's really simple, but this kind of like multi-level marketing schemes, I've always been really wary of, and I also don't trust a lot of these guys um, who are in this arena who claim to be extremely wealthy. I don't think that most of them really are. I think they're leveraged to the hilt. Uh, they're possibly millions of dollars in debt. They're trying to put out a public image that I'm not even sure is true. Yeah, and I, I think you're absolutely right in many of those cases. Like uh, a lot of those rappers uh, you see, and uh, those cars are rented, uh, and the label paid for the whole video, right? And yep. uh, their jewelry is actually on loan uh, and stuff. Not all, but a lot of that shit is just, fake uh and it's to put out an image uh, and like you said these mlm schemes you know i'd be remiss um not to bring up uh you know it makes me think of andrew tate actually uh since you mentioned it um what do you think of mr tate i think that uh tate was a voice which was needed whether you like the guy personally or not obviously i disagree with his ideology he's a muslim and he does move towards materialism but he did have a message at the right time of don't be a bitch and that seemed to be the message that really resonated with people was that they didn't have to simp and be bitches for women, especially not for uh, kind of the women who exist in modernity who are taking advantage of men, fucking them over in the divorce courts and doing her doing horrific things to them. Um, and there's essentially nothing inside of their control in those situations. And I think that Tate was a guy who came in and, and highly capitalized on that and was able to say, hey, look, you don't have to. Uh, end up in these situations. You can reject this. Um, Tate himself does not seem, even though he um, loves the glamour and this and that, his message overall doesn't seem to be one of pure materialism, but it seems to be one of uh, having some sort of control over yourself where you don't end up where um, you're at the mercy of the system or women. And so I think that that's what really pulled people over to him. Well, and I was just reading this article. I don't know if you saw uh, the article or heard me read it before. I know you're working on something, but uh, it was a Lauren Southern think piece that some libtard had, had written uh, kind of in her favor. I'm sure you may have heard about it uh, in this in this past week uh, where she talked about the 
the whole trad life, trad wife um, <clears throat> thing is basically um, uh, false, uh, false ideology or scam even, um, and uh, kind of trashed that and uh, made a bunch of excuses. And I, you got just got through saying it, and I said it before you got here. Uh, women are not put upon when it comes to these situations. They're favored in the divorce courts. They're favored uh, when it comes to custody. Um, they can, I, I said this in, uh, before you got here, but nothing can fuck your, fuck your shit up like a uh, bad divorce <laughs> or a bad, a bad, uh, either a bad woman or a woman who decided to be bad to you for whatever reason. Right. Sure. Uh, and there's literally drugs uh, are pretty bad. I know that for a fact, alcohol, all that shit can fuck you up but uh a woman can really just take everything and and take your will i mean you see men kill themselves over over stuff like this uh oftentimes uh did you see the piece first off and and what did you think about it if you did and what do you think about lauren southern i haven't seen the specific piece but i think it's in reference to what she's talking about when she says that there are essentially immigrant immigrants who are pouring into the country um who are bringing their values with them and what's happening is people are moving the message over to repeal the 19th and whatnot to placate these immigrants. And that it's essentially a, a giant scam to get that good immigrant money. Is that what you're referencing, Ethan? Yeah, uh, she talks about that. Yeah, and in her video, if you saw the video, she, she repeated a lot of this. But she, she basically described... Uh, uh, her marriage as a horror show and, you know, she couldn't do anything right. And, uh, you know, her husband was, she didn't say physically abusive, but, um, I guess verbally abusive and would leave the house and, and lock her out. And she, she had it so tough. And he, he told her not to go to Canada, eventually allowed her to go. But once she landed in Canada, he told her it's over and I don't, care about you anymore and i don't care about shared custody and fuck off basically um now there's a lot of rumors uh, surrounding that situation and I, I actually broke the story first now they were they were partially confirmed later on um that she had perhaps uh been doing some things on the side with with destiny and other creators and um perhaps um stepping outside of the the bounds of marriage uh, if you understand what i mean well uh, her initial move to Twitch was to use Destiny as an entry point into yes. Twitch politics. In this way, she wanted to be able to make a comeback. She knew if she went on YouTube and these other platforms directly, uh, that her reputation was such she would get deplatformed. So instead, she used kind of this progressive in, and that progressive in allowed her to kind of tangle with these progressives as the new reformed Lauren Southern, the kinder, kinder gentler Lauren Southern who had changed her wicked ways. Right. And uh, in this way, she was able to kind of re-infiltrate through Twitch and YouTube. And the left kind of embraced her with open arms because she now had correct think. This is uh, the same type of avenue you see guys like Hunter Avalon go down, people like this. When the system begins to get shaky, their message begins to shift with the system. That way they don't get deplatformed, demonetized, etc. So it, it didn't actually surprise me to uh, see Southern move down that road. But you see that her ideology is becoming more progressive, and this is because of the criticism that she's now getting because she is a single mom, and she had you know, been trashing uh, single motherhood before this. Now she has to cope with that, right? right. Um, I know. And, I've heard of some yeah, cases, by the way, but I'll leave that yeah. off. And now she, <laughs> now she has to cope with that, right? She had been trashing them, and now she ends up as one. Um, so a lot of this is to deflect away from her critics who are saying – how the fuck are you right wing at this point? What is what are your right wing values? What are your conservative values that you're actually pushing? And so in order for her to say, well, I don't really believe that we should move towards traditionalism, traditional marriage and to hide my promiscuous past and perhaps these other things that I did with these people and these bad choices that I made. Uh, she seems to be wanting to deflect all of this over to this conspiracy theory, literal tin foil hat conspiracy theory which says that immigrants are coming in from more traditional nations, which, by the way, if they are, conservatives should love that, right? That's like the best thing ever if we're actually drawing conser or, uh, immigrants in from conservative nations. That would be good for us politically. And that what the right wing is doing is trying to uh, kind of placate to them, which, again, even if true, would be good for us. If the immigrants are coming in, they might as well be right wing, and we might as well try to be pandering to them, right, politically. Um but what she's saying is that the, the right is essentially 
uh, grifting off of immigrants who are coming in and adopting the what she considers these extremist messages uh, of repeal the 19th and uh, we're not all equal and no, this has been a fucking unmitigated disaster thanks to feminism uh, and she seems to be resisting that message pretty heavily. Yeah, and she, and she has done an effective job, though, of kind of whitewashing uh, her her past, uh, like you said. And and in this article, um, which I read the whole thing on air, I didn't really want to, but I did. Uh, and she talks about her, she has this WhatsApp, WhatsApp group. She called it the the underground railroad of trad wives, like influencer trad wife types, uh, who who are in this group uh, and who are living these miserable lives under the uh, trad wife paradigm. Right, uh, real quick, Ralph, I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, you are on Rumble, right? Yes. Okay, and you're only streaming to Rumble. Yes, Twitter, they allow pretty much anything these days, too. But, yes, you can say whatever you want here. Okay, got it. Because there was a chatter I see in your chat. who said, BPF is so fucking boring, and I just wanted to call him a stupid faggot. <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that you're a stupid fucking faggot, and you're fucking boring. <laughs> so I just wanted to let you know that. But anyway, go ahead, Ethan. <laughs> no, that... <laughs> Feel free, uh, by the way. Uh, let it fly uh, here on the kill stream. Uh, but, uh, yeah, she talked about this underground railroad. I don't know if this exists or not or if this was just, you know, uh, pablum for the article or whatever. Uh, but she talked about these women in, in miserable relationships and they're, they're putting out this false uh, – false persona to the public but in private they're really miserable they they want a way out uh the trad wife thing doesn't actually work the trad life thing doesn't actually work um wh what are your what are your thoughts on the, the whole trad life trad it's wife fucking it's fucking cope look it's cope life is messy as you know okay people <laughs> have People have past. They have all sorts of different things. You know what I mean? But we do want to see people moving towards traditional style marriages where moms can stay at home and dads can work. Is, is, are people's personal lives messy sometimes? Yes. But especially when they're young, they're in their 20s, things like this. A lot of people make dumbass decisions, but they move past that. And they spend most of their life trying to kind of achieve some sort of traditional lifestyle, which is good for their kids. And it's good for us to be moving towards that. The problem with, with Southern is that She's kind of promoting against it. Yeah. She's promoting against this particular lifestyle. Uh, and, but there's no way for us to determine if she herself ever lived it. We don't really know what happened with her marriage. We don't really know any of that. We probably never will. But for her to say that it's a bad sign in society that people are moving towards uh, traditionalism, that's fucking stupid. We want people to be moving towards more traditional marriages we want them to be moving towards that as a goal in life. It's not to say that people can't fuck up. They do all the time. But that doesn't mean that we don't want to see them moving towards that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, and I tend to agree with that. Now they don't always work out. Uh <laughs> <laughs> um, I won't speak uh, too much because uh, I can't actually. Uh, but they don't—they don't always work out. But that is what you want to see uh, people move towards because that's—I mean—that's just how societies stay stable, right? Uh, yeah, the family unit is like the that. stabilizing unit. Yes. You know, and the thing is, is um, it's what you want to see in society. You know what I mean? What is it that you want to see as an ultimate result? And clearly, pro the progressive idea of what the family is, is a fucking dystopian nightmare. It's filled to the brim with faggots. It's filled to the brim with now polyamorous lunatics. It's filled to the brim with people like Destiny who let his wife get fucked and then promoted all over the place like it's supposed to be something which is common. You know what I mean? This, this has become a dystopian nightmare for men inside of the marriage field. The amount of marriageable females who are out there if you're talking about women with low body counts who have no children, et cetera, et cetera, there's a great book by a guy named Aaron Clary called The Book of Numbers, which goes over this. And the amount of marriageable women for young men that are out there who are truly marriageable is about 5%. And this is if we accumulate all of the traits that you would prefer in a woman. Not even talking about highly attractive. We're just talking about things like uh, doesn't have a huge past, not particularly promiscuous, um, doesn't have tons of tattoos doesn't you know what i mean um and, and is interested in some type of religiosity it's almost nothing right it's almost nothing which is now available and so it's become a dystopian nightmare for young men especially that's why you see these shows um what you would broadly consider red pill podcasts to have become so popular is because they're putting that on the table and showing people that this is so 
And the more people whose, whose eyes get open to this, the less likely it is that the trad influencers who run around and just say, oh, just fucking, you know, wife, just try to wife up whoever you possibly can and good luck to you. It doesn't seem like it's a very good message. Well, no, uh, you, you should um, pick carefully, uh, and it's about the selection. Uh, and I saw a stat, actually, uh, Blassie was on the Whatever podcast the other day. I don't know if you know her or not, but she got thrown off the show. Uh, and you may have seen that. You, you might not have. We may have her on the show soon. We'll see. Um, but I was watching the, a lot of that show, and um, I, I don't know the name of the guy who was sitting next to the main host. You know these guys. Um, but I just you know skim through their program sometimes, right, so I don't know them. Uh, exact details, etc. But uh, he he was the male guest, I guess, on, on the show. I've seen you sit in that spot before, uh, mm-hmm. and he said um, that if a woman's body count um, was was over five, that um, that the marriage has about a twenty percent chance uh, of of working out by statistic. Like that, there's studies and stats that that show mm-hmm. that that's the case. Um, how much importance uh, do you place on body count, and how realistic is it um, in this culture to uh, to expect to find too many women with a body well, count of five this, or less? This is so. This is a really this is kind of a controversial topic because there there's seemingly a double standard here, but there really isn't. So the, the seeming double standard is that uh, body counts for women are a big deal, but for men, they're not. Now, that sounds counterintuitive, right? But the reason it's that way is because women see it that way. Women don't give a fuck about men's body count. It doesn't seem to bother them. It seems to be irrelevant. In fact, they're very distrustful of men who are virgins in their 20s. Um, interestingly enough, they have a completely different purview on it, whereas men do not. And this is because I, I'm going to tell you why that is. The first reason is because of paternity. Women, one, one of the ways that you could gauge whether or not a woman was going to be a good wife to you uh, was being able to gauge that she could give you children. But before we had paternity tests, how would you know if the children were yours? That's, that's a really important metric. Well, a sign of promiscuity would show that, well, wait a second. If this woman's really promiscuous, you can't be assured that the child's actually yours. So on a biological level for men, it's, it has always been distasteful. For, uh, for women to be promiscuous. They've always been looked down on in society, and it's because of that reason. So, and so as a side effect of that, the religious have said, well, wait, chastity is actually very virtuous for women, and one of the reasons for that is because they wanted to assure paternity. That's a really big thing, because as you know, even now, women will often lie about paternity. And so... Um, you know, this is a, this is actually a much larger problem than people think that women will get pregnant, uh, you know, by some guy. And then, um, you know, these guys will raise the kids for a long time without even ever knowing that they had been caught, you know what I mean? And that's what happened to them. They were, that, that's, that's what a real cuck is, is somebody who is unintentionally raising offspring, which is not theirs. Yeah. That's the true definition. Yes. That's the yeah. That's the true definition. Yeah. And so, and I, it, it's miserable. Like I feel terrible for these guys. Um, cause it's really through no fault of their own, but that's why body count ultimately does matter. And it matter, matters a great deal. It's a, it's kind of a, a factual biological entailment for men to be distrustful of that because they instantly consider it to be, um, nefarious because of the ability of women, uh, to hide paternity. Now, while in modernity, you can get a DNA test, you can understand that this is ingrained in you from thousands of years of, uh, this was the only way to know if the child was going to be yours or not. Well, I think only one of us on the panel uh, has, has had a DNA test <laughs> uh, performed. And, um, again, not to slag anybody off or whatever, uh, but the other side of that is is it, is it can be your child and they can just say that it's not. Uh, and then you have to uh, go through the courts and basically, you know, force a paternity test. And, again, I'm not trying to dig up any dirt. I hope nobody takes this the wrong way because I'm trying to stay peaceful on, uh, on that front. But um, – you know, um, thank God they do have those, uh, right? <laughs> thank God they did invent uh, the paternity test. And, and in my case, you know, it was uh, was it 99.995%. Uh, uh, so, yes, I am the father, uh, as Maury would say. But, um, but uh, why do you think um, – I'm trying to think of a follow-up on this, though. Why do you think women, in my experience, uh, women are more more attracted to men who have more sexual experience? Um, Because it's status. 
So it doesn't really matter what the status is, right? So it wouldn't matter. Let us assume for a second that most men remained virgins and we had a different metric for what status was in society. The metric, I don't know, let's say money or vehicles or a certain type of job or something like this. They would move towards whatever that status was. In this particular case, men who have a lot of money who also have sex with lots of women and women are always chasing after them. Other women see that as a sign of a highly successful man, and so they compete for that man. So that's why that happens, and that's why they don't care about it. It's just not as important to them. For them, they're competing for a much smaller demographic. Uh, even the ones who are more unattractive still compete for that same demographic of man. Now, how does that align with uh, you know your views on on Orthodox religion, uh, etc.? Um, you know, according to I'm not an yeah. expert on Orthodoxy. Sure, but, sure. But no, I'm just okay for no sex outside marriage. But of course, yeah. Uh, so what we're looking at, I'm just trying to give like. Um, there's an is reality. and then there's an yes. ought, right? Yes. What what Normative is true? Versus positive. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. What what is true versus what ought to be true? So this does seem to be true. There's a lot of data backing up hypergamy. There's a lot of data backing up this uh, female competition. It's hard to get good numbers on it, but you see it enough in society too that um, it's really hard to kind of backpedal on it. However, from a Christian purview, you want to try to curtail that. Women didn't used to be so promiscuous. Christianity seemed to be the answer for hypergamy because of monogamy. So if monogamy is enforced, and monogamy is something which society shames women into doing and will not allow them to compete over uh, these men, which we didn't used to let them do, uh, then it seems to keep it under control. So as far as what we ought to do, we ought to be, I, I think I agree a lot with the red pill that not only should you shame prostitutes, but you should also make every attempt you can to move government policy towards the incentivization of one man, one woman, uh, period, and high incentives for them to have children together and give no incentives for divorce. Now, well, there are some, unfortunately, but uh, let me, <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me ask you this. You mentioned Destiny uh, earlier uh, in, in the interview. I think he's blacklisted me for some reason. We used to have him on the show uh, for fairly often and been in some debates. Uh, I think after the Alex Stein thing, he he uh, kind of blacklisted me. Uh, I had nothing to do with that, by the way. Stein went off on his own, and you just talked to Alex Stein. Um, and um, but regardless, um, what did you think of? Uh, Destiny's marriage uh, implosion. I mean, it, this was predicted by everybody, including you. <laughs> <laughs> who, like, who didn't, who didn't predict? First of all, polyamorous and open relationships fail 95% plus of the time. Uh, the data on this is highly clear. 95% failure rate. So the prediction right away, you only have a 5% chance, plus the woman is young. Uh, plus, Destiny uh, himself is somewhat closed off emotionally to women and women to him. It, it was pretty obvious that this thing was going to implode at some point. Uh, it just happened sooner rather than later. But most of them never last. I don't think anybody was particularly surprised that this was happening. I think they just thought it was fucking hilarious, right? That, um, that this guy, imagine that you have all of the money that you could ever dream of and you live in your great Miami high-rise apartment and uh, you have taken the uh, kind of status leap from starting as a kind of lowly carpet cleaner, uh, which is what he started as, and you built kind of a new genre, a media empire, and you really pioneered something out, and you ended up making just millions of dollars, a sea of respect from all of the progressives. You're on the biggest shows that there could possibly be, but you let men fuck your wife because you like your status with the common man goes to nothing. Your status with the, the average person goes down to nothing doesn't matter how much money you have how much uh, status in media you have if you let men purposely fuck your wife your status goes to zero so this is why when that happened men men by and large were just laughing at this guy they thought it was hysterical they thought it was um uh one of the funniest things that they'd ever seen and that you know he kind of deserved it we don't men generally just as a general rule have zero respect for that kind of behavior we just have no use for it at all and then not only that, not only did he do that, but he promoted that as like a way of life. Um, you know what I mean? Like a, a lifestyle that 
um, that you could get into, right? Uh, and that there was no in some way. ways. The thing he, is, he was he trying to that deflect that from private, him. but yeah. he made it a public thing, and he went on shows and defended this. And she sat yeah. there next to him, and they they made yep. it this thing, and you could see the ticking time bomb. You knew what was going to happen. Uh, it wasn't just like they were doing some wild shit in private or whatever, you know, and being freaky, whatever. They went out and promoted this as a uh, as a way to be, uh, as a as a thing that can work, uh, and that others. Um, although he said maybe it's not for everybody, but you know, yeah, well, they, they, it was all deflection. I yeah. mean, it's all deflection, right? So the thing is, is um, you you are promoting it. If you what whatever your lifestyle is that you're kind of taking on the world tour, and when people ask you about it, you say there's nothing wrong with this. It's not immoral. Uh, it's just fine, blah, 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 blah. That is a form of promotion, whether or not you say it's for people or not yeah, for people. Yeah, because he said it's not for everyone, but he's mm-hmm. still promoting it just by being a, the public face of it, basically, right? Sure, and making himself sure. Out, yeah. yeah, well, and, de- and his defense, right? The defense of the thing itself is the promotion of the thing. You can imagine, for instance, if I was defending that, you know, smoking was fantastic for people, if that was a defense <laughs> that I had, they used to do um, that. <laughs> that that people would say that I was promoting smoking, even if I said, no, I'm not, I'm not actually promoting it, I would still be promoting it. I would be defending it. Um, it's not a vice that I uh, defend nor promote, though I am a smoker. Yeah, and, you know, uh, speaking as a guy who's, who's lived a, a bit of a life of, of, of hedonism um, and, you know, indulged in you know, women and drugs and, and drinking and all that stuff, uh, inside, outside relationships, etc. Um, I can tell you just from my own testimony, that's not what make, that's not going to make you happy, uh, in life. Uh, Never makes anybody it happy. It doesn't make you happy. And you, and you may think you have a great deal. I talked about this on Twitter. Um, you know, a, a, a female, um, you know, it told me, well, it's, it's fine if you sleep with other females and, in a relationship, right? Uh, go ahead and go ahead and do that. Uh, and at the time I thought, wow, awesome. Great. Cool. Okay. More pussy, right? That's great. Um, but after, uh, removing myself from the situation or others removing themselves from the situation later on, um, <clears throat> I realized that that's, in my opinion, that's actually an act of self harm, um, by the woman, uh, who, who actually is, 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 like has some problem with them with themselves, right? Uh, and they're actually wanting to commit. What kind of self respecting woman would share her man? Right, and and I really never thought about that it, that way until just one day I was on Twitter and I was like, you know, it it really was just a, an act of self harm by that person, and I didn't see it. I saw it as a great benefit to me when in reality, um, it it was them um, feeling less than it was them. Um, wanting to hurt themselves uh and you know it's a sad thing i'm not saying that to to make anybody nobody not anybody in particular by the way not naming anybody uh, or any relationship um but i i didn't see it that way at the time and i, and I wish i had uh and the hedonistic lifestyle um you know it can it can be fun uh for sure but it's empty uh and there's no real Nobody feels good uh, at the end of it, right? Well, and you do. You end up. You end up dying alone. And right. You. You know. That's. That's the other problem with only looking at wealth as an ends instead of a means. You can't take that shit with you. You can pursue it your entire life, and many do. And even if you achieve it, what have you really achieved if you have no other end in mind? You know what I mean. In and of itself, status is meaningless if you have no end in mind. So. I would say that uh, you probably hit the nail on the head, and it was empty, and it is an act of self-harm um, because self-res- self-respecting men, self-respecting women, they don't share their significant others with anybody. They guard them, protect them with their life. That's what they do. That's what they have to do in order to be a self-respecting individual, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree, and, uh, you know, but society has, you know, we could talk about OnlyFans, we can talk about porn we can talk about just the um you know music videos that you see um promiscuity uh is promoted uh as as a as a way to be and yeah. be more sexually free and do this and do that well, and feminism like that. is feminism is in the very air that you breathe and it's in the water that you swim in it you're indoctrinated in it, in it even from a young age and you don't even know that you are you have no idea you have more feminist tendencies than you probably think and so do i and kind of dealing with those uh, presuppositions of understanding and these uh, kind of suppositions of understanding that, wait a second, are these my thoughts or are these indoctrinated thoughts? 
You know what I mean? And the more you start to break it down, you start to realize that almost everybody in the West is a feminist and they don't even know that they are. They think they conflate feminism with wokeism. And it's really not that. It's what feminism is, is a reactionary movement to destroy patriarchal systems. That's what it's there to do. It's there to break down patriarchy. It's there to remove patriarchy, which starts with the family unit, because the family unit is patriarchy means from the father. And fathers were the ones who safeguarded the wealth for their children. And feminism has always been about the destruction of the family unit, going back to the original feminist writers um, in the Bolshevik nations. That's what it's always been about. And the advocation of the destruction of the family in the West has always been the ultimate uh, of uh, feminist ideology. And so, yeah, this is uh, what you're seeing is kind of the fruits of that ideology come into bear and women embrace it by and large. And even men do without even knowing it. Right. Egalitarianism in and of itself is a foolish position. Uh, no more oh, news than $5 on Rumble. Reschedule <laughs> rematch with Wilson. Uh, Adam Green, I, and I was going to bring this up at one point. Of course, uh, we didn't get to do uh, the match that one night. And me and you ended up having a little impromptu <laughs> match, yeah. actually, which a lot of people found entertaining. I told, which, I, which I, I told, I told, uh, I told Green I would do it. Uh, so you would do it? Will you do it here on the kill stream? Yeah, I told him I would. Okay. All right. Well, I'll work with you both uh, after this show to set up a day because mm -hmm. I definitely want to do that. You got to give me. Um. You got to. You got to probably move it a couple of weeks out because I. Have, I know um, you're booked. So yeah. yeah um, it's yeah. fucking bad, dude. I'm sorry. No. No. It's uh, good. No. And that's no. Um. That's no shot across to Green. I enjoy my debates with Green. Um. I've always enjoyed him. I enjoy talking to the guy. So yes, I will do. Um. I promised him that I would. So I'll do the. Uh, I will do the debate on the kill stream. So. All right, I would love to do that. And, of course, the last one fell through, and I I did have a couple words about it. I didn't have any con – I guess we'll just go through it a little bit on air. I didn't hear back from you, so I'm like, is he going to come? You know, like I, I didn't know if you were, like, mad at me still, right? And so we ended up replacing it. But I tried to keep it um, on a certain level, right? I didn't want to reignite any feuds or, or anything like that. And uh, so I said a couple words, and, you know, I'll replace them and whatever. But I, I still wanted to do the debate with, with you and Green, and I, I think a lot of that was – was a was a misunderstanding perhaps uh, uh yeah i don't so. like ultimately uh, it, so that you understand how i think of these things i don't want to have uh issues with other content creators i don't care who they are i just don't want to have issues with them um i don't have any problems with like i know that you don't like them but kino casino i like those guys that's uh it, it, me liking those guys doesn't mean i have to hate you or vice versa there's kind of this idea sometimes inside of these fields that uh, people who deal with other people inside the content sphere have to either like them and hate their enemies or have to like their enemies and hate them uh, or they can't make content together. And it's all really fucking stupid because the whole goal of content creation is to make entertainment. And so, collaboration. yeah, it's collaboration and entertainment. And so I'll, um, and I'll, I'll never and I'll never say a bad word about the guys at the casino. I love those guys. Um, I like yeah, that to He's, me. But, I, but yeah, I'll, that's but, your but that's your business, <laughs> yes, right? right? It's not mine. But you know what? I, I, I will say, I think one of the reasons um, uh, for for your rise has been, and you haven't always taken that approach, uh, by the way, right? You've had feuds, and, and, and but you mended a lot of bridges, right? Uh, well, I've and, always been, I will say this, though, right? Almost every time I've come into conflict with a content creator, it's been defensive. It's, it's almost, all, there, I'm not saying that every time. There have been a couple of fights that I've picked, that's true. Uh, but not very many. Most of it has been defensive. I mean, uh, ever since the split with politically provoked way back when, um, I mean, that was a that was basically a fight for for my existence online right away. I mean, it was just like everybody and their brother was coming for me based on all sorts of rumor mongering and nonsense and this and that. And um, I mean, we just kind of entered into the field already in multiple wars and we really didn't need to be in any of them. You know what I mean? But that's exactly what ended what up happening. Yeah, and, but that's what I, ended up happening, and I was just like, it took a while, um, but in many ways, that really helped me kind of um, become razor sharp and understand the arena a lot better, and it made me a much more skilled debater, and it made me uh, much more skilled at collaboration, who to talk to, who not to talk to, this type of thing, so I don't, I don't regret it, you know what I mean, but I've never been at this because I want to have conflict with people. I want to do entertainment because it's a lot of fun to do. And, uh, and that's what people actually want. They want entertainment. Drama is only one side of entertainment. And it's the least entertaining because of the law of diminishing returns. 
the more you engage in drama, the less return you get on it. So you can you can imagine day one, the drama pops off, the returns are huge. And then day two, they're still huge, but a little bit less, et cetera, et cetera. That's why drama farmers have such a shelf life. And it's because of the law of diminishing returns. And I think if people would, would focus more time on content creation that was legitimate in entertainment, absent just trying to be in kind of these endless drama feuds with people that they would end up with much more success well i'll tell you i'll tell you one thing i i, I think um that has actually first off i take the same position as you that i feel like most of the feuds that i've been in uh, have been defensive not all not all for <laughs> sure um but i also feel like um, you know, having that rep. Now, I do interviews. I do debates. Thank God. You know, I cover the news. If it was all drama, uh, my show would have died by now, right? Sure. If I wasn't, a, in my opinion, a skilled interviewer, uh, you know, a good MC, right? Uh, the show would have died if it was just the drama. Uh, but I do feel like um, the feuds and the the constant, uh, you know, buzz around me and, you know, you know it. You know, if you're coming on the kill stream, they're trying to stop you and they're saying all this and all that. Uh, and you have all outstanding beefs and I've tried to settle some and have settled some, but, um, I think it, it makes it harder. Uh, it makes it harder to book these debates. It makes it harder to book these guests because uh, a lot of people just don't want to deal with it. And I can't blame them all, uh, right? Even if you could be the best interview in the world. Uh, and it's like, hey, I just don't want to deal with these facts, right? Like, I, if, if I go on the show, I know that, you know, what's going to happen. And I think uh, one of the reasons, just from an outsider view, uh, for for your rise is that you mended fences with a lot of people uh, is that you um, are able to um, get more people on your show in a lot of ways than I am just because of the kill streams rep and my rep is you know let's throw some blows and nobody will go lower if we get into a fight than me and you know that's that that carries a certain weight you know some people like seeing that but in a way it, it actually hamstring hamstrings my sh hamstrung hamstrings my show uh, a little bit uh, because it makes it makes my job my booking the <laughs> booking side it makes that more difficult sure well I think ultimately people should remember that um, streamers are running a business and th the business is entertainment that is what the business is is entertainment and the thing is is um, if you look at it that way and you understand that your job is to entertain people, that is what they are paying you to do. They're not paying you for anything else. They're paying you because uh, they have a fucking a job that night, which really sucks, and they have an earpiece in, and they want to get through the night. Or they're working their ass off during the day. They want to hear something that's not the same bullshit on TV, right? That it, streaming right. is about entertainment. And so the more streamers that you can collaborate with and talk to and not end up with problems, the better off you are. But there is a section of the internet that has devoted its life to the destruction of entertainers for their entertainment. And that is, and, and those people pit entertainers against each other. They do everything that they can to cause maximum carnage. Most of these people are filled to the brim with failed streamers who are not entertaining at all. And they kind of have a grudge and they have an ax to wield. Yes. They want to take anybody down that they can possibly take down. And it's, it's absolutely fucking crazy. There's no real reason for it. I don't even need to like you, Ethan. It's not really that important. Ultimately, what is important is if you and I can make a show which is entertaining. If we can do that, then what, what does it matter if I fucking like you or not? We're not in that business. Um, I don't have to agree with your views to make an entertaining no. show. I don't have to like the fucking things you say to make an entertaining show. No. I don't have to like any of the things you've ever said to me in order to make an <laughs> sure. entertaining show. And the big problem is, is that I wish people would remember that and remember that, um, that a lot of this stuff is not supposed to be personal. We're, we're, we're just entertainers, people like you. You know what I mean? We're just on the other end of the camera, and our job is to entertain you. I agree with that wholeheartedly, and uh, you know you don't have to be best buds uh, to make good entertainment. And uh, if you know anything about sports, there's all kinds of uh, championship teams uh, who won many uh, trophies uh, filled with people who didn't like each other, <laughs> right? Like, uh, uh, or so and so was an outcast. Maybe he's one of the best players, but they didn't like him, and this and that. But they came together uh, to win championships. Uh, they came together for the business end, right? Uh, and so. Yeah. I well, and it, it also, it destroys variety. Like I like, I like to do, um, kind of these high level mentalist debates, but I also like to occasionally go into a fucking, a drone, like a thunder dome and duke it out. Right. 
and um, have a have an insane debate. I think the last one we did was Stardust, right? Yes. That was a highly yes, entertaining debate. Highly yes. entertaining debate. We drug her boyfriend on, right? Oh, I mean, I it so was it was the it felt like the Thunderdome, and that is sometimes just a nice change of pace for people. And uh, I've always enjoyed going on other people's shows and doing those styles of debates, blood sports, uh, non blood sports. Uh, as long as it's kept at the level of entertainment, you're not getting swatted and all this fucking crazy shit that can sometimes come with the territory of haters. I don't think that that's a great idea. But the thing is, is that I'd like to be able to go on uh, the kill stream and do a debate. And then if Kino Casino runs the Kino Drome, I'd also like to be able to go and debate on their show. And what happens is now, you know, I have the uh, the requisite audience. You know, you're dealing with um, three to six K live viewers. We'll probably trump Destiny by the end of the year. Um, we can easily do that. But I mean, I like doing it before. You know what I mean? I enjoyed yeah. doing it long before there was any of that. I don't want to stop doing that just because um, this guy hates this guy and that guy hates this guy. That doesn't seem like it's uh, particularly wise uh, in the entertainment industry to do that. So uh, I think a lot of this fighting and infighting is, is fucking stupid, to be honest with you. And it, it actually hinders good content creation. Well, you know what? I, I have to agree with you. And that might sound like a shocking answer uh, coming from me. Uh, but, you know, like you said, um, Sometimes you feel like you have to defend yourself, and there's all these people who are pushing you to fight so and so, and they said this about you, and here's this clip here, and look what they said about your kid, or this or that, and like, oh my God, how could you do this, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and I've certainly said some things um, that I don't actually believe about, you know, personal insults about people and, and things that I. Um, I would consider morally repugnant. It's uh, super easy to, to lose yourself yes. <laughs> in the in the idea if you're in like a defensive conflict and you see hundreds of people trying to run you down, yeah. beat you up, destroy you, everything that they can possibly do. It's really easy to lose yourself in that kind of quagmire and become part of that system. And you know, my my philosophy on this is like I've tried to make uh, make good with everybody I possibly can because. I want to make entertaining content. I want to make entertaining shows. I'm not really in the business of um, of trying to make garbage media for people to consume, but rather uh, highly entertaining, high octane media. Uh, but at the same time, I want to do it in such a way where people aren't getting their fucking lives destroyed. It just seems like such a ghoulish nightmare. Um, so that's that's the way I see it. I just I don't want bad blood with people. It's not a good idea. And when you get siloed off, and when you get you know so many, you know you have all these feuds and. You, you get in that crouch, and it's like you, 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 it's hard to get out of it, right? Uh, and you know, you, you've had to settle some things, and I, I have been able to mend some bridges here, here and there, and you know, I think it's, I think it's helped. Uh, but I actually, well, there's guys out there who I've helped. Um, one guy like Jaden McNeil, for instance. I never did anything but help that guy, but um, for some reason, just me not attacking his enemies is enough for him to consider me an enemy. Um, does he consider a, you an enemy? Oh, yeah, he does. I why? Have no, I actually, I, I don't know. I have no idea why. Because I refuse to attack people he wants me to attack. Um, oh, like... The, the, yeah, forces, yeah, guess, yeah, essentially, yeah. If, if, I, if I do something which is good on my behalf, even if I'm not uh, going and advocating for whatever this other guy says, which is frankly not my concern, um, that in and of itself means that i need to be attacked because i'm not attacking the enemy i'm not siding with them right but i'm just just the lack of attack means now you have to be uh the well, enemy that, that's a really bad way to look at it that's a really terrible way to look at things well and that's happened to me and everybody knows about my blow up with america first last summer and you know i definitely went scorched earth uh and you know i changed my opinion on that uh and it wasn't about being uh, a weakling actually uh it was about gaza in a lot of ways and i agree with nick on gaza and i think we have a lot of core agreements on certain things and disagreements too um but also i don't want to be the guy you mentioned Jaden mcneil well it's what did nick eat for lunch today right on his show uh what what, what what's gonna happen at epic like it's the same thing every day i to me well, that's pigeonholing yourself as an entertainer right like well, i like yeah, to talk well, about news i like that, to do debates interviews like yeah what's strange about that too is like i don't fucking care i don't care yeah. if he does that like that's not of, of concern to me go do that go yeah, if you want to. go on your show and talk shit about fuentes 24 hours a day i don't give a flying fuck it's not it's not of concern to me 
But just me not uh, uh, doing the same thing doesn't mean that I have bad blood with you or I hate you or I want anything bad to happen to you. I just don't give a fuck about the conflict. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not of concern to me. And so, but what happens is if there was ever a conflict and you walk away from it, uh, then, you know, you're, you're priority number one target on your back, this type of thing. What happened and to it's, me? It's just really fucking Cause, stupid. Because I walked away from it and then he came back on Twitter and I'll, uh, hold on, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. I'll pull that up. I promise I will. Um, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. I, I, I will pull that up. I will pull that up. I promise. So just stick with me, Fast Gordon. Um, but Nick came back, and I'd already announced that I dropped I dropped it on my end. You know, I have no intention of, you know, like uh, attacking Fuentes. And I, I feel like – I don't know your views on anti-Zionism. I won't even ask. But, uh, you know, I'm anti-Zionist. Uh, and I feel like uh, having a more united front uh, on that is more important than some drama uh, that I felt disrespected by America first, uh, you know, in the summer. Right? Like I, f I feel like that's more important and I just – don't want to pigeonhole myself as that guy. Uh, even if it will, will it does, can make money, right? There are a lot of Fuentes haters out there. Um, <laughs> but I just don't want to be that guy for several different reasons. And he came back on Twitter the other day. Um, and, you know, I said, hey, congr congratulations, you know, good to see you back. And then somebody said, oh, so did you drop the beef? And I said, yeah, I'd already dropped it. Uh, now, I don't know how he feels. I'm sure he might still have some enmity there. Uh, and for good reason. I went pretty hard, Andrew. Uh, I went pretty hard. Um, but, uh, you know, people say, that's groveling. Oh, you're groveling back to Fuentes. You're trying to get back on Cozy. You're trying to do this and that. And it's like, no, actually, I'm just moving on, right? Uh, and... So it's not the same thing. I, I'm not going back to cozy. Uh, even they well, there's a vested interest now, in it right, from, right. from a very small demographic of very loud people who endlessly demand a half Hatfields and McCoy situation yes. because it makes them feel powerful that they are manipulating people into doing that to each other. That's all that's going on. It's very fucking stupid. People fall for it constantly. I walked away from all of it. Fuck them all. They're it's worthless. It's well, not worth anything. And that's right. And it always was the smartest. And, I, you know, I'm getting involved in these types of quagmire fights based on the whims of a couple of fucking, you know, uh, assholes who want to pull the strings behind the channel so that they can feel powerful is the kind of uh, dumb trap to fall into. Yet many people do is walk away from it. Fuck them. You know what I mean? Fuck them all. They, they, they're, they're next to worthless. And um, there's nothing that's productive anymore that's going on with that. And one of the what's really funny is a lot of that core group of people who cause so many of those problems actually bore themselves to tears because if they do get their way and people do end up destroying each other in an entertaining fashion, then it's gone. Then it's gone. And then they, they, they're like, oh, fuck, we don't even know what to do now. You know what I mean? <laughs> And it's just like, uh, it just seems so silly to me that ultimately uh, there's great entertainers. There's not that many, by the way. There's not that many online entertainers who are very good at it. There's really not. And the ones that are, it's a shame to not see them be able to collaborate because they're terrified of blowback and repercussions from, you know, kind of these, these uh, answery people who just want to cause problems. It just seems silly to me. Also, there was a grouper in the chat. Whoever banned that guy, don't ban him. I'm not fighting with them. Like, you don't have to take a, a offense uh, to anything he said. He, he didn't even attack me or say anything bad. I don't know if they just deleted his messages or banned him. Uh, if you did get banned, I, I don't see you on the list, but uh, uh, I'll unban you. Like, you know, it's hard to break. <laughs> Sometimes the audience gets up. Well, no, I don't think they banned you. I think they just deleted your comments. Uh, but, you know... Um, I think it was the best decision you ever made, uh, mm -hmm. and it didn't pay immediate dividends. Uh, but you see where you're at now, and I yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I could, I think I could have kept up beef with these creators, sure. and I'd be in the exact same spot. But I just honestly, I just don't care. You know what? It figured out. I just don't fucking care that much about what other people are doing in the space. Honestly, I just don't give a fuck. And when you put more of that energy into what you're doing, you end up making way better content. It's really, it's, it's just that simple. You know what I mean? Like I like to peruse. Um, I popped into the politically provoked chat a couple of times and said, Hey, if you guys can line up blood sport debate, I'd, I'd like to come back and do one once. You know what I mean? I don't want to have endless bad blood with people, no matter what they did to me. I don't fucking, I don't fucking care.
You know what I mean? I don't give a shit. I'm going to move past all of it. It ultimately is a quagmire. It's a minefield. There's no way to navigate it without getting blown up. So just walk the fuck out. Just go the other direction, you know, or walk around the field. Fuck it. Just get, move on, <laughs> you know, move on. Now, what, what is this you sit in fast, Gordon? This is not really, I appreciate the support. Um, Who they deem being what, anti. What is this? Now, this is not really, you know, I guess we could work it in the conversation. Uh, 11 minutes to 12 minutes on the video. Okay, I'll play it. Give me one break here, even though I don't usually do that uh, during the middle of an interview. Uh, but uh, one minute, uh, and this is from a few days ago. I guess I could ask you about Israel-Palestine. I don't really think that's your thing, but I'll play it. All right, one minute, he said. Who they deem being anti You can't hear it, unfortunately, so you would have to listen on the Rumble stream. My pastor doesn't work. Medic, um, here's what he had to say. We yeah, are going to be it. engaging in massive... Uh, defensive and offensive lawfare against bigots, anti-Semites, and potential violent terrorists. Uh, we're going to take many, many kinds of legal actions. We're starting a group called Herd a Jew, We Sue You. Herd a Jew, We Sue You. In which if you send us the name of a Jewish kid, it could be a Christian Zionist too, who was hurt by one of these bigots, uh, we will sue them and we will get their dorm rooms taken away and we will take their cars and their boom boxes and we'll bankrupt them we will do whatever is necessary under the law in order to bring these lawsuits bring them successfully and deter october 7th remember there are people out there who have promised they will bring 10,000 october 7th that is that's genocide. 10,000 October 7th is the end of the Jewish people. That's genocide. That's Hitler. Heard uh, a Jew, we sue you. Okay. Now, that was the clip. Uh, that was Alan Dershowitz, who has a checkered past uh, himself, actually. Um, I won't get into all that. Um, did you even get involved? Of course, that's one of my uh, pet issues, I guess you could say, is free Palestine. And I've always been like that since uh, I can remember, since I was a teenager, right? Uh, even before I got into uh, the right side uh versus the left um do you have any thoughts on that uh do you have you said anything about it do you care anything about it on the israel palestine situation yeah let them fucking kill each other i don't give a shit <laughs> i don't give a fuck let them kill each other doesn't mean anything to me well you know what there's a large there's a large section of my chat and you know i'm like i said i'm a free <laughs> free palestine guy but um there is a there's a large a subsection who are just like I don't give a fuck uh, you know whatever uh, just let them kill each other and and keep us out of it uh, yeah. right uh, and I, I think that you do represent uh, uh, a large a large portion of the chat now there's some free Palestiners in there like me too but uh, I think you do represent a strain of thought for for a lot of these guys now um, you're not supposed to get entangled in the uh, domestic policies people don't even share religious values. This is a war between Jews and Muslims. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a flying fuck what they do. It means nothing to me. I think that American foreign policy should be to completely defund uh, all aid going to either Israel or Palestine so that we can spend it domestically. I'd rather see it go to our veterans. I'd rather see it go to our homeless. I'd rather see it go to our infrastructure policies. I don't want anything to do with American foreign policy uh, sending out m hundreds of millions of dollars to either of these nations to get us entangled in these fucking god-awful quagmires. I don't want any of that. My preference is, uh, is to be, again, now I understand that because this is going on, people can leverage it one way or the other. Uh, and you see it being leveraged one way or the other. But honestly, we should not be getting entangled um, with, uh, with Muslims against Jews nor Jews against Muslims. It's not our business. It's not our business, and I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I care about Americans. I don't give a shit about uh, Palestinians. I don't give a shit about uh, Zionist Israel either. I don't give a fuck. All right. Now, um, you mentioned politically provoked. Um, they're going through some things over there. I don't know if you saw any of that. Um, I no. don't even know if that's a work or what. Mio and her are fighting or, or something. I, I I don't know if you have any thoughts or, uh, you know, about it. I have you seen no, I, I, you don't, you don't, I don't even know you don't even know what's going on there no clue okay. yeah i don't pay i don't pay i don't pay any attention to this shit well you gotta think of it think of it from from my perspective um my revenge on politically provoked was just to go out and be successful and it was the with the world's ultimate revenge um i really didn't ever have to do anything 
uh, whatever they do with their show is essentially their business. Um, but I mean, this is, you're talking about a really tiny show. Um, it, it's essentially insignificant to me. It just doesn't mean anything to me. Um, so I don't really pay much attention to the goings and comings. I just keep the peace and, you know, I would go on and do a debate or something like that. And I don't hold any grudges, but I really just don't fucking care what happens to them. It's, it's kind of their concern. Uh, most partnerships, as you know, in this industry are doomed to failure. Uh, almost none of them work out long term. Almost, um, you know, they almost always shake apart no matter what. It doesn't matter how good these people are or how good they work together. They just end up, just like in most businesses, there's no ship that sinks like a partnership. <laughs> so, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, you know, if things tumble down over you there. Know or, I was just you know. told, and I predicted this, actually. I called it out as a work in the first place, and it turns out that it was a work to use wrestling mm-hmm. parlance uh, and that they were just uh, doing a little griff thing there they were just uh, so, fucking around yeah okay. and i just now found that out uh and i could smell it i'm an old school wrestling fan i was like i don't know man if the dirt doesn't start flying immediately then uh i have a tendency to kind of look askew here like this might be a work uh and it turns out i was just told that it was now i haven't been following it as much like you said i just saw a couple tweets and it's like whatever but uh um, yeah i don't even pay attention to that i mean um I just, I just don't have time to pay attention to any of that shit. I just don't care. It's not, it's just not important to me. I mean, we parted ways a long time ago and shelved all that old conflict, and I just don't care about it. They don't bring it up. I don't bring it up. We don't bother each other. You know what I mean? They can yeah. do their thing, and I do my thing. You do your thing, I do mine. Kino Casino does their thing, I do my thing. I don't bother any of these people. I don't go after them. I don't publicly chastise them. I don't do any of that. I focus on what is my arena and what is my world. And, um, and that's, that's where I'm at. Now, what about orthodoxy? Uh, and I mm-hmm. don't, can't remember if I've asked you this question on the show before, but I, but I may have, uh, so forgive me if I have, but, um, what caused your, uh, conversion to orthodoxy? Orthodox uh, well, actually it was a, it was a consumption in the beginning of internet content. I didn't even know that orthodoxy existed. Um, when I, when I started to kind of poke around in the debate sphere, I started. I was able to talk to people from uh, various religious backgrounds, and so was my wife. And we were introduced to this. And at first, I was highly skeptical, thought it was nonsensical. Um, but after a while of engaging with that community, I understood that it, there was something here that was worth checking out. So I became an inquirer. And then um, after I was an inquirer, I stayed for a little while until I figured out that I, I needed to understand the higher truth of Christianity. Um, and then I, I became a catechumen. I stayed a catechumen for roughly two and a half, three years, something in there, uh, until I was formally accepted into the church and baptized. It was a long process and theosis is ongoing. You don't just get accepted into the church and you're done. That's not how it works. It's a, it's a lifelong process. So I got into it by trying to understand church history and trying to understand how to make good logical arguments for my epistemological foundations. And I couldn't. And I knew that that was a problem, so I went and looked for answers and found them. So what makes orthodoxy better than Catholicism? Uh, well, there's no pope. <laughs> right? there's That's no kind of what it was about in the first place, the great yeah, schism. Yeah, that's what it was about. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no pope. Uh, the sequence of, uh, of bishops, I think, is a much, it's, a, it's not only a much better standard, but there's all kinds of weird, incoherent nonsense inside of Catholicism from my perspective, too. They have bizarre sexual things. They have bizarre things when it comes to marriage, like annulments, and we just pretend the mar- the, that the wedding and marriage never happened. And there's all sorts of little strange, weird uh, shit inside of Catholicism that just doesn't exist in Orthodoxy. And also, think about this. This is important, that I can walk into any Catholic church which exists and take communion tomorrow. They consider me to be a Catholic, but they cannot really? come to our... Yeah, but they cannot come to our churches and take communion with us. No, wait, how's that? I, I, I didn't know that wrinkle. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Catholic Church considers us to be Catholics. They don't even consider us to be, uh, aside from that, the, uh, or nor even truly schismatic. They just consider us something akin to a wayward brother. But you, I can go in and take, um, uh, instantly, I can take, partake of any Catholic sacrament. There's no, no problem no with that at all. Of course, we don't. We consider well, no. it basically the devil's poison, right? <laughs> but, but the point is, is that, um, we could, and that's, that's a big distinction that not a lot of people know about. I didn't know that at all. Yeah. Uh, and I know a little bit about the great schism and, and the differences, but I didn't know that. Uh, right. This so, guy, uh, this guy points it out, um, in your chat 
this is um this is kind of what the catholics say on this they say well catholics wanted to end the schism but the orthodox don't return the favor right well we we consider them the schismatics they consider us the schismatics but uh they have absolutely no problem at all with our theology and consider us to be um the catholic church I so, so yeah. I, yeah i had i had no idea about that now um uh let me ask you uh first off what are some debates that you haven't had that you would like to have? Oh man, um, well, there's quite a few. There's some there's some big leftist content creators we'll be tangling with soon. Um, Corn pop, that, the bad dude. You know, I'm interested in. Actually, that's a good question. Though, what that question that just came yes. up? Oh yeah. Um, oh, and I'll read that. It says, "Why do Orthodox <laughs> priests look like Jew Pharisees?" Is what it said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if you're wondering why the garbs look different, it's because of the non-Westernization. It's, it, you know, Christianity, its origin is in the East. And so a lot of the um, kind of original garb and this type of thing is uh, adopted. And, and because it's an unchanging tradition, they have kept the various robes and headgear and all this type of thing. And because it's Eastern looking, uh, that's why it brings that to mind. So, I mean, that's actually a good question. I had the same question. I was like, why does this all look like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's, it's because it kept its Eastern tradition. That's why it looks like that. Um, but anyway, as far as debates that I haven't done that I've been wanting to get into, uh, I would really like to do um, some more gun control debates. I think that that would be a lot of fun. But those are kind of boring for people. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that I would like to do more of the Matt Dillahunty style Christian Christianity is an effect on society. I'd like to dive even more into taking on other Christians on secular marriage and why I don't think it's actually a really great idea to be promoting that. I'd like to dive into um, kind of all sorts of debates across the, the spectrum. There's not that much I steer clear of when it comes to uh, debating. So if something something comes to mind that you want to set up, I'm happy to dive into it. Definitely. I'm sure it will. Um, now, Explain what you mean uh, by secular marriage, and I've seen your wife talk about this on Twitter as well, that the state shouldn't be involved with marriage at all. Uh, is, that, is that your position? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think, uh, I think the promotion of secular marriage in society is not good. Uh, I mean, so what Catholics would say, and the Orthodox have a slightly different take on this, that there can be a reflection of, of marriage as far as the church is concerned in society the truth is written on your heart and people naturally gravitate towards marriage okay well there's some truth to that but also you still have to take into account what are you pushing people towards so if you're pushing them towards a state marriage where the divorce is as easy to have as breaking a cell phone contract i think that's a fucking problem and I think that that actually leads to kind of horrific outcomes. And the fact that we're kind of putting that up on our shoulders and lifting it up on our shoulders is something that's virtuous for men to go towards. I don't really think that it is. It seems like it's setting men up for failure. And it seems like it's setting women up for success at their expense. And it doesn't seem like it's something that I want to be pushing men towards at all. I'd much rather be pushing them towards sacramental marriage absent the state with an ecclesiastical authority that can provide the community support necessary for their marriage to thrive. I wonder in some cases, like um, uh, even in your case, when you had kind of, uh, you know, these various marital issues going on, if you had had the grounding foundation of a church that had a really strong community around you, would that have hurt anything or would it have been helpful? To be clear, I can't speak on uh, any of those topics. Okay, well, uh, hypothetically, publicly. you can understand. A hypothetical situation, yeah. though, I agree with that, yes. Yeah, um, that, that something like that, one of the big things of, of just going out of the courthouse and getting a piece of paper, um, there is no community organization for you. There is no groundswell um, community which is there to help support you in your marriage, in your times of struggle, your times of strife, your times of addiction, your time, you know what I mean, all these different things. Uh, which that community is really there to help you help see you through. That's why you see such strong family bonds in Amish communities and why they're able to reproduce. They're doubling yearly for a reason. And it's because they have an internalized authority. They do not just let you go, oh, okay, we're done now. There is a community which is involved who's like, no, look, you can't be a fucking piece of shit. You can't be fucking up. You can't be doing this type of thing. Uh, and I think that that's a far superior system. Yeah, and it's hard to disagree with that. But um, in, in reality, um, you, you almost have to submit to se secular marriage uh, in America, at least, right? Because of, you know, 
tax benefits, uh, recognition, uh, and hospitals, yeah, and, and but, things like. But that. look at this. Um, <clears throat> let's uh, even even when I think of it that way, and I think, okay, but you can get married to a person, then you get these additional benefits. Why not just give them the additional benefits without the marriage? Then I don't get it. Like it seems like that's just an easy like little tweak to the law, and then you get the same benefits you would have if you weren't married. I don't I don't really understand why you would need to have the state involved and call it marriage if all you're really after is like maybe some earned income child credit, a couple of tax breaks, and you know uh, leaving your Subaru to your spouse. It doesn't seem like the state really needs to be involved in an issuance of a license nor in the process of divorce. It seems to me that if, if I were a secularist, if I were an atheist secularist and I were to look at the current marriage system in the United States, I would, I, and, and some, a woman asked me for a contract with the state absent any sort of church backing, so the church wasn't involved in any way, why the fuck would I ever do that? That's like the worst deal ever, right? It's like the worst deal ever to sign a contract like that. Why the fuck would you ever do it? So it's no shock Question. to me that men are checking out of marriage across the board. They want nothing to do with it. It's hard for me to even blame them. Well, because you're at a disadvantage. Uh, and, you know, if things work great, they work great. But uh, oftentimes they don't. Uh, and like you said, you don't have the... Um, if it's just a secular thing and you and you're not based in the church at all, um, you don't have that support to work through some things. Uh, and universally, I think this is understood that uh, men are in a, at a disadvantage when it comes to oh, yeah. uh, divorce courts and custody well, this, issues and all this. It's stuff. It's like this chatter points out uh, Acts 40L. He says, "But you're gaming the system." Additionally, the whole point of making a state society is to procreate and uh, the awarding of benefits are for that goal. Yeah, but here's the thing. If you're creating the incentives the opposite direction, wouldn't that be counterintuitive to the goal? And the goal seemed to be to, to have some kind of monogamous society based around the nuclear family. That was a reflection of religious marriage for secularists. And so the religious weren't, were, were a little bit more keen on recognizing that as being valid. But that's not really the way that it's going now. It really seems like it's inverted and that the incentives are there to now to not get married. Uh, so I'm not sure that it, it really is gaming the system. And I'm not sure when you say the whole point uh, is to, to get a procreative society. We do not have a procreative society at all. Our birth, our birth rate is in the toilet and it's going to continue to stay in the toilet. We're pumping in millions of immigrants to replace the population. We can't even replace ourselves. So I'm really not sure that, uh, that that's a great argument in modernity, man. And oftentimes the, what it actually has has turned into is incentivized divorce. Um, yeah. Because, because women, I mean. Yeah, it's turned into a dystopian yes. nightmare that yes. the, the whole system has. So I'm uh, I'm not really sure that I'm going to uh, to agree with you. I think, I think in theory, you're right. You know, we want a, a good procreative society full of happily married people, whether they're religious or not. But that is not a reflection of what we see in state marriage now. All right, now at all. Know. Let me read these uh, super chats sure. here. Uh, Amer Amerishart says, I watched a documentary of old believers in the Russian Orthodox Church, and it reminds me the original East-West schism, schism, excuse me, what level of heterodoxy should be tolerated, or is it schism all the, schism, excuse me, all the way down? Yeah, heterodoxy is not to be tolerated at all, and it is schism all the way down. Everybody who is not an Eastern Orthodox in our framework is schismatic. That's just that's just it. They're not heretics. I have yeah, great like friends. Catholics going to hell? No, they're not going to hell. Uh, I mean, we, we don't make salvific claims that way, but I don't I don't think so, and I don't think most people in the Orthodox Church believe so. I have great uh, friends friends and family who are Protestants. Who you know, I don't I don't I don't think my dad's going to go to hell because he's not an Orthodox. You know what I mean? At least I sure hope not. Um, but does he have the fullness of the faith? No, he doesn't have the fullness of the faith. Is that going to hurt your chances i i think it does uh but i'm not going to make a salvific claim in either with the orthodox church but that doesn't mean that we're going to pray with you or that we're going to commit ecumenism either um because we believe that the true church of christ is the orthodox church but we would i would not say that i uh, know you're going to hell uh, or something retarded like that no no fucking way i mean there's no way for me to determine it and clearly there are very very good people who are protestants who um, who definitely have a relationship. I remember asking a bishop this question. And he said, well, didn't you start out as a Protestant? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and he's like, well, were you a fucking piece of shit just because you were a Protestant? And I was like, well, 
I'd like to think I wasn't. He's like, well, <laughs> why do you just assume everybody else is? You know, and I'm like, well, that's a good point. You know, and he said, by the way, I started out as a Protestant too before. <laughs> now he's a bishop in the church. So, um, no, we wouldn't, we wouldn't say that. And honestly, you know, I've said somebody's going to hell before myself, but honestly, that's kind of a blasphemous thing to say, uh, in the, in the first place, really, cause you're making God's call there, right. Uh, by saying, you know, somebody's definitely going to hell or this or that. And really that, you know, that's not in my, opinion. yeah, we can't really make this, the yes. salvific claim, you know what yeah, I mean? But yeah. there are some people who I would probably feel pretty comfortable saying, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> there are a few people I'd probably feel pretty comfortable being like, yeah, yeah, you're probably going to hell. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Corn pop. Probably a few. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, Corn pop, the bad dude one says, "What do you think of God using Lucifer as a helping hand to test us in Jewish texts?" Is what he said. You mean in uh, in the Old Testament? Well, I. The way to look at this, the proper way to look at this, is as a holistic. Um, it's not that God is allowing. Um, uh, Lucifer to test you in a conventional sense. It's that all things which are evil, God will use for good, even on the behalf of you without you knowing that that's what's happening. Uh, this being would be testing you anyway, be destroying you anyway. God's, uh, it's always been within the purview and the allowance of God to, uh, um, to allow your free will to engage with the world. And what, what ends up happening oftentimes is people fall prey to the demonic, but that's not God doing that to you. That's you doing that to you. Now, Adolf says, I'm Roman Catholic, and I consider Orthodox our brothers. We have more in common with them, in my opinion. And you, Andrew is right, though. Neither Catholics or Orthodox should be damning people to hell. No, um, we shouldn't. Yeah, and that's kind of I mean, maybe, maybe a couple of people, Adolf, right? <laughs> maybe, like, maybe, a couple of, maybe a couple of people we can be like, okay, dude, you're, you're, you're going to hell. I mean, come on. You're, you're definitely going I mean, we still shouldn't, I know, but that just in my own head, you know, the, the thought pops into the head, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, Dahmer, you're going to fucking hell. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're luring people to your house uh, and chopping them up and... Uh, yeah, you're going to fucking stuff. hell, yeah, I think. You know what I mean? So, if, uh, should I say that? No, probably not, but, you know, I just, I think... Um, I think there's a couple I'd feel fairly comfortable saying. That <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Nala. Okay. So is that the is that the chick from OnlyFans that uh, that yeah. uh, supposedly converted? I don't know if it was Catholicism or, or just Christianity. No, she converted to from the Hillsong Heresy Church. I don't know what that is. Uh, Hillsong is a church where uh, kind of these massive e celebs go into. Okay. Uh, usually, when they're under fire for something that they've done incorrectly, they want to use Christianity as a cloak and a shield in order to get out from under whatever that is to avoid criticism. As you know, it is a thing that people will often do. They will move over to Christianity as a shield, and suddenly all of the people who are around uh, will kind of rush to their defense as a newly christened Christian to say, no, we have to give them a chance, we have to back off on the criticisms, this type of thing. In the case of Nala, that seems to be what it is. I had a debate with her on the Whatever podcast before this happened. Some people have credited with me with the fact that she went and did that to begin with, though I'm not sure that that's true. Um, but we, we had the debate. She did shortly thereafter go and convert. But it seemed to me like um, she she was used up, right? She's at the end of her role when it came to how much longer she had in the kind of top tier of OnlyFans creation. Another guy that she was in, uh, you know, uh, involved with, I guess they ended up uh, getting married. And I think that it was possibly a uh, demand of his that he would not marry her unless she converted to Christianity. So she did. Um, but then she went on the testimonial tour, right? Of no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually fantastic. I'm a great person, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, well, wait a second. I think we better back off. And, uh, before we start singing her praises back off and allow some of the fruits, like for instance, I would think that it would be uh, prudent if you understood that you had led so many men towards damnation and horrific acts to possibly give that money back or give it to a good cause. I'm not saying all of it, but maybe a good chunk of it, um, you know, in order to try to right your wrongs, I think that that would have probably settled a lot of people down. They would have thought, wow, that's some real fruits coming out of her. But they never seem to do that. They always seem to go and rob the bank. And then, um, you know, they go and they tell the judge that they're real sorry, but they never give the money back. 
right. or even a portion, like you said, uh, yeah. would maybe prove something. And, uh, you know, I have my own uh, views and on, on religion, my own thoughts. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll keep those to my, to myself for the most part. Um, because I, I wouldn't want it to seem, um, you know, I've, I've had over the last few years, I had some, uh, altering views, uh, et cetera. But, um, I, I, Personally, I wouldn't want it to seem like um, I was rushing out to uh, convert to uh, Catholicism or Orthodoxy or whatever to um, as some. Well, those things are there. Look, look, the Church of the Church of Christ is there when you hit rock bottom. That's what it's there for you. Yes, but and it's supposed to be there for you. But there's a distinction, I think, between people who hit bottom and they're fucking miserable and they they try to move towards the true path. And people who move towards the true path to use it as a cloak and a shield. And you can yes. see it in their fruits. You can see it in their fruits. You don't walk away with hundreds of millions of dollars made illicitly on the backs of people from you sucking hundreds of dicks and getting fucked every which way you possibly could while a camera's on you. And then go, oh, I'm redeemed now and I'm keeping all of that. And now you can kiss my ass. Now, fuck that. That's nonsense. We, Of course not. Why would we do that? For one thing, absent or after the conversion, you should not be doing these kind of like... Um, public prayer seances on Twitter in order to get yeah. attention. That's the opposite of the point of Christianity. That's why I don't lead these public prayers. I don't do any of that fucking shit. I don't talk about charities uh, that we may donate to, not donate to. That's not what the point of it is. That's not what the purpose is. Yeah, and, I, and it seems a, a bit performative. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I would want anything... Um, you know, in my own case or anybody else's case, to to, to be more more authentic, right? Um, yeah. You know, if you well, rush well, out after some scandal or whatever, and then you, oh, I'm a, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Christian one. now, and forgive me, and you know, yeah. all this didn't happen, <laughs> and uh, you have to be on my side now. Um, to me, that just um, uh, it's belittling faith a, a bit, uh, in my a opinion. A bit, but I mean, like uh, New Age Messiah in your chat, he says. Um, uh, but it's a cloak and shield for everyone. It is, but it's not supposed to be a cloak and a shield against any criticism. It's supposed to be a, a cloak and shield for your, for your divine soul to go to heaven, not to uh, stop people from being able to ever criticize you again. That is not the per- point and purpose of the movement towards Christianity. In fact, you should expect if you're on the narrow path, you're going to get criticized more, <laughs> say, yeah. more, not, not less. So. Yeah. Um, also, Corn Pop says, where does morality come from? It comes from God. That's the justice and basis for all morality. The only way you can truly understand what morality is is if you use God as a um, as a grounding foundation for that. Uh, now, you speaking about uh, orthodoxy uh, and um, you know the Orthodox Church, um, have you personally had some people tell you that they've moved over uh, to to orthodoxy because because of you? I get. Uh, Literally hundreds of DMs of different people who have begun inquiring, and uh, tons of clergy have reached out to me uh, to discuss it. You have to remember that I do not run an Orthodox channel or an Orthodox apologetics channel, nor do I run a ministry, and I don't want to. I run an entertainment channel, and I happen to be Orthodox. That's a far different thing than having a Orthodox channel. So there are people who are uh, very skilled Orthodox apologetics, and that's not me. I'm a political debater. There are people who very much have these ministries that are online that are great, and I recommend that people go and discuss with them if they're looking to inquire or do any type of conversion. Um, That's not even really properly my place, as I don't run any sort of ministry on behalf of any Orthodox church. And I see Yang in chat says, Nala changed her grip since she realized her only fan ceiling had been reached. If she was genuine, she would not be making a public spectacle of it. She would do so privately and delete her socials. That I disagree with a little, though. Because I don't, I mean, if you have a public conversion and you want to tell people about it, um, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I think that that could be a good thing, all right? Uh, a good example to others. But there's a line there, right? Like, is, is it... 
you know, you want it to be genuine, I guess. Does this make sense what I'm saying, right? Like, um, not performative, not, uh, you know, let me go, still look all tarted up and talk on the Daily Wire and, uh, you know, we're healed, I'm healed now and all this immediately, you know. I I, I think it should be more of a, a process rather than just a heart. It's like a heel, it's like a face turn in wrestling. I know I'm using wrestling terminology, but all of a sudden, you're, you're a good guy now, right? You did the face turn. Uh, that's not how uh, conversion works. You talked about a, a two-year process for you, right? Like, uh, you know, it, it's not something that's just uh, overnight. I, the public part of it, I don't necessarily have a problem with, other than, like you said, hard to keep it. Yeah, making on. making the declaration that yeah. you're moving to Christianity is fine, but that doesn't mean that we've seen any of the fruits of that move. And I think that we need to not be naive, and that why Christ can save everybody. That doesn't mean that everybody who comes in His name is going to be. Uh, you know, authentic about it, let's put it that way, or may not have ulterior motives for why they are making such a move. Now, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm looking through uh, chat here. Uh, I'm glad the Nala thing came up. Uh, what do you think about just OnlyFans uh, in general uh, and its um, positive or negative uh, effect on society and women in particular? Only, only fans should be completely eradicated from the face of planet Earth, along with all forms of pornography, in my opinion. Most of, um, most of our nation's history was not rife with pornographic material, and it has had nothing but a counter effect in society, and it actually counter signals what it is that we want to see with the family unit. Uh, we should be doing everything we can inside of society to remove uh, temptations like this from the general public. And it's not like... Um, even if you were to say, Andrew, would you roll it back to red light districts over OnlyFans? I think even then, if somebody asked me that, I, I took a day to think about it. Like, you know, that's actually a good question. Um, what if you had legal brothels instead of OnlyFans? Would that be worse on society or better on society? Actually, and even though I don't want to see it, I, but I do actually think it would be better. I think it would be better because what happens now is the kind of OF phenomenon and uh, this type of phenomenon allows women to become prostitutes without having to pay the penalty that prostitutes pay um, by entering into that kind of sex work. And also, it makes it so widely available for everybody Porn pop uh, the bad, via the internet, right? It's just yes. it, the pornography is fucking everywhere. I can't even go on Twitter and have a conversation without OnlyFans in bio po popping up 50 times. And I see it on everybody's account. Uh, there's nudity, graphic nudity everywhere. You can just re be responding to someone, click their profile to see what they're all about, and it's just nudes all over the place. And it's totally and, and it's totally allowed. You know what I mean? Totally you almost allowed. can't escape it, right? Yeah, um, you can't escape it. And it's like I think I think with brothels though, if you had brothels, I think I think you could. Yeah, yeah. I think you could escape it. So I, you know, I'm I'm like maybe maybe it actually would be a better society if there was a brothel system instead of this type of ready-made pornography, you know, I, I think both um, are bad and you should reject both and neither one should be there. But if I had to choose between them, I think I might go with the brothel. Yeah, um, I don't disagree with that. Um, and the OnlyFans, and it's not even for the, for the women who make millions of dollars and, and do all that. Um, uh, most women don't make millions of dollars. And yeah, look at them right. in the chat. They're like pussy and bio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> pussy and bio. That's exactly what it is all over fucking Twitter. Just pussy and bio. <laughs> but a lot of these women make uh, very little. They, they see all these others making money and they're like, oh, I'm Molly Truck, whatever. I can get in on this. And they make, you know, pennies on the dollar. And then, uh, you know, there are sites that archive all this OnlyFans shit for free. Uh, mm -hmm. And it'll be out there forever if you've had an OnlyFans account uh, and you've basically um, scandalized yourself in a way for very little monetary return, uh, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's really, to me, uh, it hurts those women more than the ones that are in the top, you know, 1% pulling down money. But overall, it hurts society just in general, uh, I think. But um, Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to be qualitative about how much one would wreck it worse than the other, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, so it's all, it's all pure speculation, but I thought it was an interesting question, an interesting thought experiment, you know, when you really start to bear down yes. on it and you start to wonder which one of these things really would be more damaging because the amount of 18, 19 year olds who are like, oh, this college thing is hard. I'm just going to go show my butthole on the internet has been rapidly increasing. And I don't think it's showing signs of slowing down anytime soon. 
It's increasing, if anything. Yeah. Yeah, um, it is. Uh, I see Corn Pop with another one. He said, did people know, wait, did people that didn't know your God and bow down to him get, wait, wait, wait. Did people that didn't know your God and bow down to him get salvation like the thousands of cultures before Christianity? Yeah, so, well, first of all, um, again, this is a this is a holistic. You have to look at the entire whole. But to kind of dive into the question, the answer is yes, of course, there's people who had salvation, even absent knowing the message of Jesus Christ, uh, because the truth is written on your heart. That is within the teachings of the Orthodox Church. Catholics have something that's fairly similar to that, but even Protestants do. We don't we don't think that you're a blank slate. We think the truth is written on your heart. And of course that there's going to be people who never heard the word of Christ who uh, are still saved because the truth was written on their heart. Yeah. All right. Now here's a, uh, another super chat from uh, Amerisharts. And he said um, to butcher slash paraphrase common filth. The fundamental conceit is that nobody actually ever consents to the outcome of their action. Uh, his autism shook me out of libertarianism. The outcomes porn, uh, et cetera. Do you have any thoughts on that, Super Chat? I'd have to ask you, um, when you're talking about outcomes, when you say they don't consent to the outcomes, I guess that that's true. You're not consenting to an outcome, but you are consenting to an action. Um, that is interesting. That's an interesting argument against libertarianism that I'll think about. Appreciate the Super Chat. Uh, and Base Friend says, I converted to orthodoxy also in 2021, partially thanks to Jay Dyer. Uh, yeah, he's so. a great one. Wonderful apologist. I think he's argued on this platform before as well. Yes, he has. He's, he's been on the show. Oh, yeah, that's right. The T-Jump one. That was like the fucking funniest <laughs> episode I've ever seen. In fact, that was my introduction to this program was watching that fucking debate. <laughs> T-Jump, and look, I don't call it one way or the other as the moderator, but that was a... I think people could call that one on their own. Yeah, they that could one. call that one. <laughs> yeah, I try to that keep one. that policy of not calling them since I'm the moderator. But uh, yeah, that was a, a little brutal. That was a little brutal there. Um, now uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm looking through here uh, on on chat. New Agent Messiah looking like he he wants to debate you. He he has an interesting story. We've had him on the show. Um, and uh, he, he talked. Well, about I mean, it. as a frame Just, of reference, so that you understand, I don't usually um, debate theology. I'm not even authorized from the church to do so. I mostly stick with political politics, debating. Yeah. That's where I that's that's where I stick with. So I know that there's a lot of people who uh, they want to have theological debates with me. My suggestion is that you tangle with an orthodox apologist like Jay Dyer. That's their bread and butter. That's what they do. Uh, I stick with politics. Now. With the Adam Green thing, though, I'm assuming theology is going to come in uh, into play there uh, a little bit, right? Um, sure. Okay. All right. I just want to make sure that that was still cool because mm -hmm. uh, uh, a lot of people do want to see that. Um, now, let me ask you, um, first off, um, what are your plans for, for expansion? Uh, you've been kind of blowing up uh, everywhere. Uh, I'm seeing you everywhere on all these big shows. And uh, I'll read this super chat, too. The only reason I'm... St. Augustine oh, sent shit. $3 for acts in the world as a village it. in a ship or the sewer in a palace. Remove the sewer, and you will fill the, the thing, palace with a stench. Stop. Similarly, concerning the bilge, he says, take away whores from the world, and you will fill it with sodomy. Okay, now I'll read that to you uh, in case you couldn't see it. I, I, I was going to stop it and then read it after your answer. But he said, whore acts in the world as the bilge in a ship or the sewer in a palace. Remove the sewer and you will fill the palace with a stench. Similarly, concerning the bilge, he says, take away whores from the world and you will fill it with sodomy. And he quotes uh, St. Uh, Augustine there. Um, thoughts on that? Well, uh, so St. Augustine, he it's interesting because while he is a saint of the Orthodox Church and of, uh, of the Catholic Church, uh, we have a very different takeaway, and uh, we don't agree with everything that St. Augustine said, mostly because he had weird fucking sexual hang-ups. A lot of these guys have really weird sexual hang-ups, and his, he had an interesting backstory with his mother and all sorts of things. Um, I'm not sure that I agree with that. I'm not sure that you... Um, that you can't have a, a decency or moral society if you don't have prostitutes for men to go fuck. I'm not sure that I agree that that's true. Was he true. the one that said, uh, Lord, deliver me to salvation, but not too soon or something? I can't remember if that was him with, with, the, with the quote. I can't remember. I'll have to look that up maybe after you leave. But uh, So what are your plans for, for expansion? Are you planning on um, 
you know, go, trying well, to my plans, that. my plans are just to continue to put on, uh, some of the best debates that I possibly can and continue to do political commentary and continue to try to run one of the most entertaining shows on YouTube. That's the, um, you know, that's the ultimate goal. Um, as far as plans go, I'm going to continue with whatever podcast. I have some big debates set up with Fresh and Fit. I have some big de debates set up on uh, a couple other uh, very large platforms. Also, a lot of interviews which are going up. Um, there's just a there's just a lot of stuff on my plate. Um, but as far as expansion, it's just to grow the crucible. I don't plan on and never have planned on. Um, trying to do some type of like advice thing or anything like this in order to, um, you know, get money off of people. I know that that's kind of the, the, I don't know, the hierarchy that people like to do is once they get large enough, they start to monetize their own advice and their right. time and things like this with the audience. I'm never going to do that. Um, and even my merch store, we do sell merchandise, but that's because we use the money from the merchandise we sell to give merchandise away. <laughs> right? Like that's right. what we use it for. Um, the only other thing I might do is uh, because there's been such a demand for it, I might release some uh, some paid debate modules. But um, but other than that, what is what um, do you mean by that? Uh, so so hundreds and hundreds of people have reached out uh, for advice doing debates oh. and have asked if I can put something together for them. So I think I'll do that. Uh, but I think I've earned selling that as you know I've refined that over the course of many years. Um, other than that, though, uh, I really don't expect to make money off of anything other than I put out entertaining programming that people want to watch and support. Essentially, um, that's as far as I want to take it. Just have a really entertaining channel and continue to promote it on large platforms and venues and have as many conversations as I can with people. Now, let me ask you this. This is a little bit of a Larry King question, one of my inspirations as an interviewer here. But uh, uh, if you had... One piece of advice uh, for people out here to uh, live a fulfilling life, um, what would it be? The one piece of advice I think I would give more than anything else is the understanding that materialism itself, the pursuit of materialism itself, from my perspective and purview, and now bumping elbows with rich people all over the world, seems to make people more miserable, especially men, than any other single thing I've ever seen. It seems to make them more miserable than drugs, alcohol, um, even even uh, you know other insane things that you can think of. Materialism itself and the pursuit of it for its own end seems to make people more miserable than anything I've ever seen. And so my one, uh, my one piece of advice would be do not pursue that as the end because it will not fulfill you. That would be probably my one piece of advice from everything I've learned inside of all this online madness. Now, we've kept you for almost two hours, and you've been very generous with your time. Uh, and I think that was a good uh, inflection point on on where to end it and that's why i asked that as the final question um tell people where they can find you promote your stuff say whatever you want to say here i thank you for coming on the show i know me and you have had an up and down um you know relationship over the years uh but i've always respected you uh <laughs> you've uh i think you have a certain amount of respect for me for being in the business this long at least uh and it was good of you to uh to come on the show again and i appreciate it yeah no problem ethan um best of luck to you in life um, if, uh, you know, if there's a good, some good blood sports out there, of course, you know, I'm down to, uh, to come back and Mary slug James it out, um, but just understand that, you know, I may do that on shows where you don't like those people sure. either, but who gives me. a shit, yeah. uh, from there, you can find me at the one and only channel, the crucible. It is the fastest growing debate channel anywhere on the internet to my knowledge. Um, I'm a political commentator, political satirist, and also a blood sport debater, um, and thank you for having me on uh, the kill stream today. You're welcome. And also, I'll get with you, with you on the Adam Green thing, and maybe that stretches into later in, in, in the month of May or early June. You know, depending on your schedule. Yeah, um, we're I'll, probably going to have to do it in June. Let's focus on a let's focus on a June uh, slugfest okay. with Green. All right, that sounds good. And Mary Jane uh, said, "Excellent conversation. That was fun. Let's do it again." And she said, "God bless you." Uh, yeah, God I'm, bless you too. Yep. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. Andrew Wilson, live on the Killstream. Thank you, sir. There he is. Ooh.
Oh, there he was. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!